We are often interested in determining if there's a difference between two groups or two treatments. For example, in medical research, we often want to know which medication is most effective in stopping a disease. You may be interested in buying batteries for your gaming system. Do generic or brand name batteries last longer? Is it worthwhile to pay more to get the brand name batteries? When testing water quality, do the pesticide levels depend on whether you take the water samples near the surface or near the bottom of a river? In education, are certain types of learning strategies better than others in increasing your memory skills? Statisticians are trained to use data to make decisions on these types of studies. In an introductory statistics course, you are typically shown how to conduct a two-sample t-test to compare two groups. For example, in our textbook schistosomiasis study, we want to know if a new drug will reduce the number of parasites in the liver of lab mice. So in a two-sample t-test, we would use a null and alternative hypothesis to make statements comparing the mean of the treatment group to the mean of the control group. We would then conduct the study and use the sample statistics from our study to calculate a test statistic, and then use a statistical table or software to calculate a p-value. In essence, we are comparing our test statistic from our study to a theoretical distribution. In this example, we are trying to determine how likely it is to observe a value greater than or equal to 2.92. Here we see that we observe a p-value of 0 0.011, meaning that the probability of observing 2.92 or greater is about 1.1%. So in this example, we conclude that the treatment does reduce the number of parasites in the liver. However, in this example, it is likely that the p-value is incorrect. We need to be very careful not to trust a p-value provided by statistical software or by a t-table unless you are certain the appropriate assumptions are met. Hypothesis tests that involve theoretical distributions, such as the normal or t-distribution, are called parametric tests, meaning that we are testing parameters, such as the mean, from a specific distribution. Parametric tests work well as long as several assumptions are met such as independent and identically distributed samples and assuming the data follows a normal distribution, or that we have large enough sample sizes to ensure that the sample means are normally distributed. In this study, there are only five observations in each group. We cannot be confident that the sample means are normally distributed. Since we cannot be confident that the sample means are normally distributed, we will use a distribution-free test, also called a nonparametric test. Such tests do not require the distribution of our sample statistic to have any specific form. Instead, they are based on computer simulations. They are particularly useful when the sample data are skewed or when the sample sizes are small. In other words, when the parametric tests don't work well. In the next video, we will show that the randomization test, one type of nonparametric test, estimates the p-value in the schistosomiasis study to be 0.028 quite a bit different than the 0 0.011 we observed using the two-sample t-test. We will also show that in this study, the randomization test provides a much better estimate of the exact p-value than the two-sample t-test. In introductory statistics courses, almost all hypothesis tests are based on population means. However, non-parametric tests can also be extended to other parameters of interest, such as the median. The idea of randomization tests is not new. In 1935, top statisticians, such as R.A. Fisher, stated that the randomization tests were typically superior to two-sample t-tests. However, back in 1935, we did not have the computers to conduct these simulation studies. So they used the two-sample t-tests as a reasonable approximation to the randomization tests. In summary, nonparametric tests and parametric tests have similar goals. As long as the assumptions are met, either test can be used and results will tend to be very similar. In parametric tests, we calculate a test statistic, such as a t-test, and then compare that test statistic to a theoretical distribution, such as the t-distribution. The corresponding p-value is only accurate if the test statistic actually follows that theoretical distribution. If model assumptions are not met, it is likely the p-value is not valid. Randomization tests do not use theoretical distributions. Instead, computer simulations are used to compare the statistics from your study to results obtained when we repeatedly randomize the data across groups many times. 
While this video is limited to comparing two groups, non-parametric tests can be used in any situation where parametric tests are used. As we continue to go through this chapter, I hope that you will see how the randomization test has many benefits over the parametric test you typically saw in your introductory statistics class.